So we're here again with some of the questions that we get from our social media platforms. So today's question has a lot of different issues and uh, I'm going to try to answer as quick as I can, as simple as I can, and then we can record other videos with more extensive answers. So this uh, gentleman asked a, a question, he had a transplant in 2016 in England, not that it matters, but that's what he says. He has a concern about his hairline, the direction of the grafts, the, uh, there were a lot of multiple hair grafts placed right on the hairline. So it looks pluggy and he's asking what can be done to fix it. So just a few issues here in the question he asked, he asked about SMP, scalp micropigmentation. That's a whole topic for a whole another video that we will record. But anyway, I, looking at the pictures here, what I can see is yes, the hair line, if you can look at the pictures here, first of all, it's very straight. So not very natural a hairline has to be scattered and uh, there's also a lot of big hair grafts here two and three hair grafts right on the edge so that's not good to you want to use single hair grafts for the edge of the hairline for that natural transition another thing that i'm seeing a tendency all over the world not just in england and everything is surgeons doing a hairline on a guy that looks like a female type hairline right away i can see that the corners here have been flattered uh, flared too much and that doesn't create a natural look so if it wasn't for this this could be this will be a little less noticeable but this hairline has a lot of wrong things going with it now i'm going to it so it will take uh, some fixing it's not luckily for him it's probably not too low here so this central part doesn't have to be really fixed or, or removed back but we would have to remove to do the best results we will have to remove a bunch of these grafts that have been pla placed on the on the frontal temporal angle right here and that can be done a few ways we can actually punch out these grafts and remove them or uh, depending on the number of grafts it's actually preferable to actually do laser hair removal before the transplant because Every time you go to harvest these follicles, it creates scarring, right? So then you can you can have scar tissue right on the hairline. And then we would do the same thing. We would um, remove some of the bigger uh, grafts that were placed all along the front, break them down into singles, and then re redistribute them uh, to create that soft look. So it's going to take some doing. It's going to take some work. The simplest thing to do will be just to harvest some single hair grafts and build it in front, build a soft hairline in front. but. I don't think this will give the best look because of those flared angles here. That's a very, very uh, difficult thing to fix. And if you are out there looking for transplants and a doctor draws your hairline and you're a guy, doctor draws your hairline like that, don't do it because that's a very, very big mistake. And you know, it's a giveaway that it's been transplanted. So even if everything looked natural, this hairline with this temporal angle flared like this will be a giveaway. So. Yeah, it can be fixed. It's going to take some doing and someone with experience to do it. So, doctor, is that common? Yes. Like, is this, is that something that patients complain about all the time? They don't complain about it all the time because they don't realize that their hairline doesn't look natural. You know, I'm talking about these angles here. This is a very big no-no. One of the first things you learn when you're training to do hair transplant procedure, if you do a, a fellowship or a proof training like that with someone with experience, we're going to talk about not to do this on a man. If this was a lady, yeah, that's why you want to do a hairline on a, on a lady. But this creates a very unnatural look for a patient. And I can tell by the forehead, you know, kind of lack of wrinkles. This is probably a, a young patient. Mm -hmm. um, and that's not going to look good as he, gets, as he gets old. It doesn't look good right now, to me at least, it doesn't look good right now. Imagine later. So, but that's a common trend that we see. Very aggressive, we call it frontal temporal angles, these transitions here. On a man, you always want to make them, you know, tuck them back a little bit. Yeah, we can be a little more aggressive, but you never want to do a round like this. It just doesn't look good on a guy, you know? Yeah. And Doctor, is, you did mention that you could redistribute the grafts. I think that's something that a lot of people are not aware of. Right. So when cutting them down and redistribute them, do they have still the same viability as the other follicles that were implanted? That's a great question. Yeah, they should because, well, you know, these are donor zone grafts, right? Hairs that came from the donor zone. So they are, uh, for all intents and purposes, they're donor hairs. I'm just, instead of removing them from here, I'm removing them from here. So I'll use the same punch that I would use back here with the FUE, remove them and then move them out. Or like if it's a two hair graft, I would break them down into two singles. Um, you know, so I don't use to, I don't have to rely on any more donor zone for that. I can use what's already been done. And that's good because he does mention here that he did some SMP because of some over harvestment that was done. So that would be the thing that he would need to do. Correct. So it's been another issue too. And again, this, in a simple couple of, a couple of sentences in a paragraph, this patient brings up a lot of important issues and it just highlights how 
a transplant that hasn't been done right the first time, how many things it takes to get it to fix. You know, it's a very involved, not to say expensive <laughs> proposition, you know, and so um, it, it's difficult. So, you know, it's one of those things. The, the first time you go for a transplant, that's when you want to have the best result possible because if you start to get into having to fix it, it's a never-ending journey. It's almost you know? like people may need a playbook on what to do to be able to know exactly. how to figure so, that out. As you deal with the, 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 the financial aspects, simple and plain to that camera over there, how much you can save by doing the right thing on the first step. Oh, absolutely. There's a difference between how much something actually, the price of something is and what it's actually going to cost someone. Right. right. Yeah. Fixing something is always going to cost more money than doing it right the first time, right? And uh, again, a lot, of, a lot of different things involved here. Young patient, probably going to need more transplants in the future. There's already been a problem with the donor zone having to have SMP to fix the over harvesting areas. Now we have grafts that need to be moved. So, you know, you start to stack up all these things and exactly. it's never a good thing. Now. That's just not to take any hope away from him. This is not the worst situation I've seen by far. You know, uh, thankfully, thankfully for him, this is fixable and it's doable and it's going to look good, but it's going to take some work to get there. And it's going to need a doctor with a certain skill level to be able to accomplish that too. Correct. Yeah. You know, aesthetic sense, uh, it's uh, one of the most difficult things to teach anyone, right? And when you, when you see doctors that are trying to learn hair transplants, some of them just don't have that eye for it. And you can... You can pick up rulers, you can teach people how to measure distances to be safe, you know. So even a guy, a, a doctor or a lady that doesn't have a lot of that artistic sense, they, they can learn the, the parameters, right? There are some numerical things you can do to make sure your hairline looks good. Nowadays, there's even a laser device you can put there and it'll give you a shape of a hairline. So, but this to me, and, and again, I see this more and more now, it's just not an aesthetic thing that looks good in the men. And this is a, one of the basic principles of hair transplant and hairline design, you know. I, we have a video on our YouTube channel about hairline design and I go through that a little bit. Of course, when I teach this in meetings and congresses, we go to a lot more detail. But bottom line is, a lot of rules have been broken here. Basic cardinal rules of transplantation to the hairline that have been The basic stuff, overlooked. basically, yeah. yeah. Now you did mention that it's something like you're seeing more and more. Do you think yeah. it's because of the rise of people going overseas to be having procedures? Yes, that is too. And then also a lot of inexperienced people, whether technicians, well, you know, we're seeing a lot of that and doctors too, that, you know, they, they did a couple of cases, all of a sudden they're experts and they're doing surgery very cheap and they're getting all these patients and they just, just, they just don't know what they're doing really. You know, they, they should learn better before they start. Uh, Absolutely. And a hairline that's that's badly designed and badly done, it's very hard to hide because it's your hairline. You're going to be wearing a hat all over, you know. And so um, now that you know, I, I have to say, there's a, f a few good things here. You know, the density that was achieved, it's great. You no, know, it looks good. But just uh, you know, in a, not even I didn't mention the hair angle. If these hairs have been placed in a more forward angle, like they should have been, again, basic tenets of just basic hair restoration, surgery planning, and hairline design and execution, these hairs are straight up and down. They're like 90 degrees. That's never going to look good. You know, it'll be more forgiven if the hairs were doing that. And then another issue too, fair skin, dark hair, high mm. contrast. You can see that edge from a mile away. Mm, yeah. So again, a person of experience that knows how to do things, that went through some good courses and, and slowly got into the transplants, um, they understand that you have to evaluate hair coarseness, hair contrast, hair color, skin color, hair curl. All these things are important. And in your mind, you have to be thinking about all these things. I've been doing this for so long, it's automatic now. But these are all the things that when put together, you start to add up one wrong thing on top of another wrong thing, and you end up with a very complicated situation. You know? mm. So, so as, as you, you are listening to that, and there's a lot of information for you, the simple way of understanding that is that do you want to have a rusty metal crown over your head or a gold, or gold shiny one? Yeah. They're all different prices for that, but the result is also different. It's up to you. Yeah. You know, again, we go back and forth in the pricing. When you compare two different physicians or two different hair practices or clinics, 
and they have different prices, understand you're not comparing apples to apples, you know. Um, a person with more experience, a person with uh, dedicated and exclusively to hair that spends a lot of time learning and educating people on hair transplantation and puts his heart and soul into this, it's, gonna, it's not going to cost the same as somebody who just looks at this as like just another form of making money, you know. Mm -hmm. And so all these intrinsic things play a big role, you know. And so do your research on before you select a provider. Don't let the price be your only guide because a lot of times it'll steer you in the wrong direction.